The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Good morning, everyone. Basil Chapman here on this Monday, the 9th of September. And we're looking at the Dow up 373 at 40,720. It was down over 400 on Friday, the very ugly candle because it tried to rally and then it reassessed what was going on uh, with, the, uh, with the jobs report and the uh, current, concurrent um, yields, etc., and it just took a dive. And I looked at that and I said, there's something wrong with this particular pattern because um, usually it's the yields going higher, at least for the last couple of years, it's been yields going higher that really spooked the market. So what is going on? And I, I have to tell you, I can't believe the number of crashes uh, that uh, I'm hearing about the market about to crash I don't see it. I don't see it at all. I don't see any of the criteria that match anything close to 1929 or uh, 90 or 2000. I mean, we can go 1987, nothing like that, or the uh, 2007 high. I just don't see it. There is no frenzy to be buying anything right now. Um, I know that the, the, that the bullish sentiment is very high in terms of people, what they people have already but not necessarily the emotions. But I just, I'm looking at this and I'm saying, I I think we go higher. I don't, I don't think we make a high until the IAI, the broker dealer ETF, is trading, it's at 124. Uh, yeah, all time high, it's just a, a week ago. But I don't believe we make that high, the real high, until that index is soaring just screening to the upside with newspaper headlines and uh, media headlines throughout the world talking about this mega bull market. Uh, I, I just don't see it. I know there's, there's a bunch of stuff coming up with elections um, for most, for, for not most, but for many people, either a uh, person that's doing the debate tomorrow night would be totally unacceptable and they've got very, uh, they believe, very solid reasons. I just look at what's what's working, what's not working. And as far as I'm concerned, I see um, some kind of a consolidation taking place and we'll be talking about that. So let me just go back to this and get just wrap it up because I did this on Friday but I need to do it again. So this double top Back on the 20th, let me just give you the exact right there. So on the night on the 19th of August, the Dow goes to 40,907.32. You know that every penny in the, in the Chapman Wave methodology has a purpose. It took me a long time, years, and quite a bit, of, I have to say, quite a bit of money to figure out that every once in a while, there's what I call a parallel high, and that if I treat it as a, I do this all the time now in the in the e mini futures. I have uh, I have a phantom peak, and I say I'm prepared to accept that. And if it gets to a C, because at D other things can happen. Your objective is to get to the fourth highest peak from a buy signal, upgraded to a buy mode. But every once in a while, I found that um, it got to a C, and then it failed miserably. And I would be waiting there for a D, and I thought, something has to be And Then I discovered that if there were parallel highs, I prefer if it's very close. But parallel highs, you can treat that as a phantom B. That is part of the technique. It's not like I'm form-fitting. I'm saying everything about the uh, fundamentals, everything about the, sorry, everything about the tacticals and the price are saying that that peak C, which I called the C right there, with that sharp move down that Monday, the Friday we make all-time high, Monday, whoo, gap down. And we, that says, look back, and I've been already talking about this, and I, you know, someone asked me, did the Chapman Wave fail? No, Chapman Wave did exactly what it did. I failed only in the sense that we are still long and we're still doing really well, but at the same time, um, 
for instance, we have the Dow, we go three times long the Dow, we've done it from the very low using Chapman methodology. But I should have said, let's take quite a bit off our some of our positions. We have been taking, I always do that for money management, we take a little bits off. And then I say, I should have said right here, because there's a chance of an alternate peak, let's consider that we're going to take some off. We can always put it back, but at least we are doing due diligence. And that means that all the due diligence I did up to then, that very moment was a chance to actually take some really good profits. For instance, in our IWM, Russell 2000, uh, which went from the 2004 entry that we had all the way to 228. We didn't take a little bit off. No, we didn't take anywhere close to enough and gave back a big chunk, but we are still in that position. And I'm saying, as far as I am concerned, I'm calling this a peak D. Now, what happens, and I, I've done this, I don't know how many times, I, I couldn't even mention how many times live, I've said in the futures, when I'm showing you the, the positions in the futures, I say, I'm going to call this a peak, a phantom peak, A or phantom peak, B. I, I'm calling this top a D, but that D, what happens if it pulls back, and it isn't a very steep pullback, but it pulls back, and then it makes a new high, all I do is I take that D and I put it onto the one that's there. I take the second one, I put it there. In this case, I take the B and officially put it where it should be. And then it's at least said to me, I was cautious, cautious enough. But the Dow, even to this moment, is still acting really well. When you think of the low of 38,499 to the high of 41,585, and this pullback, let me give you a fib. Maybe I'll just do it. I've got it, I think, already on the YM. I don't want to mess up. Make the, yeah, no, I don't. So what I did in the IM over the weekend, as I'm doing this, I'm saying, you know, this IWM did the peak C1, C2. That I did notate. And that said, be careful because it's like a phantom peak there as well. So when I'm looking at this, I say, wait a minute, this is a, one of my least favorite patterns, the cup and handle pattern. Why? Because if you identify it correctly in the cup, that's great. But if you start to get it higher up, what happens is it pops to a D, and then it comes back into the handle. So we're in the handle right now. Now, this morning I had a choice. I was going to say, in fact, I had already in said, no, I'm just, I need to be a little bit careful here. Because I missed that exact top by identifying it officially, putting in it as a D with a phantom peak. Now it is there. Um, I, instead of going back into, uh, we're still long, the UDOW, but we've had really nice trading positions. Instead of getting back into a trading position, which would have been at, let me just put it in right now, it would have been pre-market. It would have been round about, it opened at 85, 95. So it would have been, I would have wanted it under 85, 90, and I think we would have got it. So, and here we are at 86, 69. We're up nicely, but it's not a big deal. Um, I just said, we're going to step aside any new positions. We've got enough long positions, just I'm stepping aside. Now, this is really interesting. Look, in the, let me go back to this, because I, I need to take, this is the beginning of the week. I need to take some time just to explain what my thinking is, why my thinking is that. If you go to the week chart, there could be an alternate count. I believe at this particular point, and I, I, if I had to give it a weighting, I'd say 68 to 72% a conviction that this is actually a peak C and that we should still go to the late D in the week chart. That says, hey, everything's still looking pretty darn good. I'll be back and we'll go on with all the rest. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, 
charts and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. I, so I, I could go to the uh, futures and explain a whole bunch of these things, but it's not technical Friday, so I'm not going to do that. What I'm going to do is say, if the Dow is up, it's, given, it's got back the actual loss that it had on Friday. Uh-uh-uh. It went much higher. So we've got to get to the middle of this case. It's almost like a Chapman Wave inverted red Roman candle. Another one of those myriad techniques that I've developed over the years. And let's see if this one's going to work. Because if the Dow can hold, I'm going to have to give it 90 minutes. It's got to be at least 90 minutes above 40,880. That's 100 points from here. I mean, that's, that's going to be a big deal. I, I'm not sure it can do that. But if it's able to do that today or tomorrow, then it can tackle the higher Friday, which was 41,009. Okay, enough with that. What I am looking at here is uh, within the context of the S&P. Let me run these quickly because now I've got a bunch of questions that I need to get to. A very ugly candle on Friday. Nine period moving average went red. I have to consider that that's just a warning sign. It's nothing. You, can, you can't dismiss it. You can't say, ah, no. But everything now is weak because the nines under the 14. The MACD is weak. The relative strength is weak. The stochastic is down at 16% already. That's a huge move from a high just a, a few a week and a half ago. Whew. And, there's, and the and the on-balance volume is very weak. If you look at the – do you remember the Groucho Marx eyebrows? If you look at the weekly chart, um, look at that red candle. And yet that nine-period moving average is still fantastic. It's still way above the 14. And look at the monthly chart repelled from this very long-term – here we go – very long-term – click – inside track. Repellent zone goes all the way back to the 666 low of Monday, the uh, 9th of, oh, the 9th of March, 2009, little birthday today. Um, yeah, and it's pulled back, so we're going to have to see. And, and so far, the technicals are still very strong. That's the reason why I can't feel like there's, I, I see a consolidation. I've been talking about that for a little while, consolidation going on. Um, and that's because the SMHs are very weak. Even now, the SMHs have popped nicely. They're up 3.74, but then they had a high of 220, and they couldn't hold it. So the day is young. Right, the 200 period moving average is like a magnet. Uh, it's just it, to break away. It's got to get to the 227 level, and I suspect that it's going to arch over. And the semis are the other clue to say, be careful. There is still market weakness. Now let me go to this quickly. Look at Google. 
This is Google. This is not the trading stock. Google. That's a dreaded H failure pattern in the daily chart under the 200 period moving average. Look at that peak G in the weekly chart. Look at that peak E in the monthly chart. I can't dismiss that there are things going on here, especially with the mag seven. Look at that magnificent seven peak C meta meta. Peak C in the monthly chart is still, no, leg C. I have to go to the leg C because you have to wait for the whole month to confirm that there was a peak. There was this double, triple top, really, a rising pattern. Peak D, doji candle in the weekly chart, pulling back with the nines over the 14. But the daily chart says, yep, oh, I didn't even fill that in. Went to a peak D. Remember, D is where you, that's your expectation. And then a pullback. I can't yet. I have to wait for the end of the day to give it a, a down arrow to say sell signals in place. But yeah, got to be careful. Amazon, Amazon right now is trading. Uh, same thing. Uh, now, this is one where I could technically at some point come back and say there's a peak C1 and there's a peak C2 failure pattern. I don't have to do that. This is more like rolling over, trying to test the 200-period uh, exponential moving average sub-3 at 174.45. Inside track repellent zone went uh, from green to pink to green to pink to green to pink, and now it's still pink. And that's what I mean when people say, "Oh, so wait, you could just have a 914 and automate it and just..." Well, you got to you got to account for that. You would have bought at the high, sold at the low, bought at the high. It's when it has these spectacular moves, like uh, when I wanted when I clicked on uh, last night. For the uh, at four, 40, was it 45? Uh, wrong chart. 45, nah, 50, 5410. 5410 in the EM, ESU. 5410 at about right there. 5410 because of the uh, one minute chart and then the, then the five minute chart. And look, the green nine period moving average held all the way through until 8 o'clock, and then it dipped pink, and then it went green. And I am calling this a C, but this is what I always do. You see this double top. I'm going to do this now because it applies to everything that I'm talking about in the daily charts. You see this double top right here in the E-mini in the, at 9 o'clock to 9.10. This is a 10-minute bar. It had a high of 50, uh, 40, sorry, 54.57.50. The very next bar, right on the 200-period moving average, went to 54.57.50. So that's a double top. But I have to see it. I have to see something inside the my technicals that I follow that gives me the little hiccup that says you could use this as a phantom peak. So when I go back, I just want to be correct. I'm not saying, oh, you go back and you change it. Everybody can do that. No, that's part of the technique. You want to be ahead of the game. So that says, I'm going to call this a phantom peak. And then because it's the futures and the trades in quarter quarter point. Oops, I just made a mistake. It trades in quarter point increments. Uh, that means that instead of a penny, that means it's easier for this to uh, – miss giving a peak and I'm calling this a D and that's the way I like to do it I go back and I say can I correct something because your only obligation in the chat from wave is to get the lettering right and there it is leg D in the weekly chart maybe a peak D leg E in the uh, in the 10 minute chart in the 5 minute chart and a peak G in the one minute chart and I'm ready for a pullback that's the way I look at it now I would have missed it completely if I'm, I could still, this could change, but I've got a phantom peak and I say, okay, everything says this is time for a, a digestive phase. And that's exactly what I like to do. I wanted to explain it, take some time. Didn't mean to go there. Okay, let me do this quickly. I've done the indices. I just wanted to show you gold is holding okay. It's up three and a half. Silver, different chart pattern altogether. Much weaker, much weaker on the 200 period moving average up 38 cents at 28.56. Look at this high grade copper. High grade copper can't get out of its own way. That nine period moving average is negative and it just it tries to rally and it can't hold the rally. But it's on the 200 period moving average in the weekly chart. And that says 4.05 in the continuous contract. If that holds, finally, over the next two weeks or so, maybe a little more, we could get a decent bounce. But that's something to watch. There's your peak D. It's in a, it's almost in a sell signal in the in the monthly chart for high grade copper. I don't like that. Okay, so I'm just saying 
because I did not want to go long at any long positions this morning, only because there are lots of weak spots. Look at Microsoft, our Microsoft. Microsoft trading right on the 200 period moving average, making the H pattern that could become a dreaded H. That Chapman Wave uh, stalk leg formation was just absolutely perfect. We couldn't have made it up. It's just exactly what we wanted. Went to that neck and E fails um, up in the four uh, 60s and came down. And then what happens when the beak completes, there's a lovely rally. And then you've got to be careful. Okay, so I just wanted to go through those TLT right now. Uh, just nothing to see. TLTs and leg C. Uh, I suspect that there's going to be maybe one more pop to the upside, but it's the yields that yield means that yields are coming down a little bit. Bells and Chapman Tight Conditions Hour. I'll be right back. Dow's up $404. SB's up 47 Be right back. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Keckstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. They think it's too volatile and risky. Most people aren't going to take the time to educate themselves on how to do it right. But you're not most people, are you? At TFNN, you'll get the guidance you need to refine your strategies and techniques to invest like a pro. Because you'll be a pro. All TFNN subscriptions, books, software, and courses are available at TFNN.com. And I'm even going to tell you how to get them for less. Use TFNN's Tiger Dollars and you'll get up to a 20% bonus on your purchase. And once you apply them to your account, Tiger Dollars are automatically used for all future or recurring charges. Tiger Dollars also never expire, are fully transferable, and are a great way to add savings to your newsletters or services. Become the investor you were born to be at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. This portion of the Tiger Technician's Hour is brought to you by Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. 
Hi folks, so let me just go through a couple of things. Berkshire, Berkshire Hathaway, BRK.B, um, made a peak E on the 4th of September at 484.82. And what I had noticed was that there was a 40, uh, 475 open, I think it was the day before, and that was a hint to say, oh, be careful, especially with the doji candle at an all-time high. So it's pulled back, and I think it's in a digestive phase. It's in a leg D in the weekly chart. It's in a leg D in the monthly, which went way above the Chapman Wave Inside Track repellent zone. Um, if it's going to digest, my suspicion is that uh, Berkshire Hathaway will pull back somewhere into, if it takes out 450, 452 support, and right now it's at 464, so that's a big deal. If it takes out 455, sorry, 455 to 452, then there's a good chance it's going to take a little bit longer, and that whole 450 area to 447 would be digestive, and 4. 49 is the nine period exponential moving average in the weekly chart. So that would be if it's going to use this opportunity to take a breather after a spectacular move. So I hope that helps you. Looking out technically, the monthly chart and the weekly chart with a stochastic at 88% in the weekly and 90% in the monthly, that is fabulous action. I suspect Berkshire Hathaway should still go higher. Next question was, I don't know if it was a question, but it was, uh, I think it was... Jeff in the den uh, mentioned Erie, E R I E. Um, that's trading at 5 to 4.38, uh, up 18. Leg D gapped up to a leg D. I'm calling this, I'm gonna, I'm, I, I did it really quickly. I'm going to have to modify it at some point. But I thought that there was a, if there was a trough, uh, sorry, a peak, you know, remember on the way down, we call them troughs on the way up, it's called peak. But if there was, um, at that nine period moving average pink before it turned green, the week of the 28th of June and the week of the 5th of July, it went to 369.10. And then I thought, mm, maybe that's a, a, a phantom peak. And it went to 369.85. Uh, I could call it, I usually like, I like a very, very tiny difference. Percentage wise, I could call it a phantom A. And then this would be B, and this would be leg C. I mean, that's my inclination right now to think that we're actually in leg C. But it's either a C or a B. I could give it an alternate count. It's just so strong. Erie, Indemnity, Inc., A shares, leg D in the weekly, monthly chart, leg. I'm calling it, it's got a B, but I think it's more like a C in the weekly chart and a D in the daily chart. Looks fabulous. Where could it digest to? It's at four, uh, 524 right now. Big gap up. If it takes out the Friday, Friday's low, which is at 497.30 in the next week, then consider that it could go down to 482 to 478. And then I think it's ready for another big move. It's the whole area. Uh, so I just wanted to mention, so Berkshire Hathaway, I, if I, I thought I saw a round number. Yeah, that's right. It was it was around number 475. Let me tell you where it is. And that's really important to me. Uh, 475 open on the 3rd and the very next day, the 4th, goes to an all-time high. And now it's pulled back below 475. If it closes above 475, I'm giving it another three to four sessions. If it closes above that, it says it could retest the highs. But that is uh, just saying that is probably in a digestive phase right now. Um, so that reminds me, we were looking at UNH because the broker, the insurance and the healthcare industries have been the best so far. So United Health, Health I, I mentioned this the other day, I said it's acting so well, it's acting very well. Then it went to a leg E and then I said, whoa, whoa, whoa. Let's monitor this to see if there are any round numbers. Well, uh, we saw 600 was the open the day that it made up. Why did not six or six? Yeah, 600 was the the high, and 607.84, sorry. 600 was the open on the 4th of September as it went to an all-time high. The high itself was 607.94, but that 600 said if it, if it closed under 600 and couldn't break and hold and close again, in the next few sessions above, that's going to be your repellent zone. 
So look what happened. The following session, it had a high of 600.61, went down to 592. Today, it opens at 598.32, has a high of 599.48, below. So it's making lower highs. And look at that candle. It went down to 575.27. It's bounced back to 589.02. I don't know if there is a, is there a dividend or something, whatever it is. This is a Chapman Wave Roman candle. And it says in the next two set. Well, I don't know where it closes. Let's just say it closes here. If in the next two sessions it trades for 90 minutes under six, uh, not six, it's five, 583.8. Let's call it 583. 583, there's a real good chance it will test today's low. If in the next two sessions it closes above whatever today's high is, so far it's 599.48, there's a chance it could retest that high. So, uh, and then I had a question. Could I? Could you follow up? Uh, don't forget. Don't forget to follow up on that stock, that the healthcare stock that you were looking at, that had a potential peak uh, uh, instant restart. So, uh, John, let me just look at this. Uh, this is uh, uh, S O L V. Yeah, what I'd said is this is this is an instant restart. But if the E goes very much higher, then you've got to consider that it is potentially going to go to an F and then fail at a G. Then pull back sharply, maybe go back. It will be a G slash C. Maybe it goes back to the previous high to make that missing D, and then it pulls back sharply. So this, so far, this is very bullish. Uh, look, the 9 is way over the 14. The price is way over the 9. I still keep that yellow circle there to say it was an instant restart. You can think E slash A. I don't need to do that right now. Just go alphabetically up as long as it keeps going up. Stochastics at 94, and the on-balance volume is a little bit overboard, so it says it could pull back any moment now. That's in the healthcare. Solventum Core Healthcare is trading at 66.78. Um, the next thing, oh, and I should mention that We've been long for quite some time, but that wasn't the point. The point was just to go to it's Apple. Um, Apple is trading. Look, this is so it's a peak C, and you say, "Oh, but wait a minute, it should go to a D." No, it doesn't have to. If it fails under the previous peak D, E, or F, the major high on the left side, it can do that. That makes it even worse because it says if it does fail, it can go all the way below the starting point. I don't think so. Apple's just rolling over, taking a breather. In the weekly chart so far, that's a fa an A, a gray A, because it's just a, it's it's like um, it's a right shoulder pattern. It's the it's the dreaded H potential, but it's not there. And it's a peak C in the monthly. It should still go to a leg D in 2024. So I just wanted to do that. I'll just say 215 to 212 is a really important support for Apple. I'll be back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. The stock market is a delicate interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. This is where opportunity lies. But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, you don't have to worry about that, as Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom Daly as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. 
Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. The stock market is a delicate, interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. This is where opportunity lies. But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, you don't have to worry about that, as Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom daily as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Hi folks, we're back. So, Agnico Eagle AEM, I was asked about uh, if I could look at that uh, in the tagging YouTube, and I, I also want to know uh, just uh, what was the question? Round number, oh, round number intraday bottom over the years. I see this clue. As ultra bullish thoughts. Yeah, so look, so let me update this. So this is in a buy signal to buy mode, and that leg C went to a peak, so I'm raising it up because I haven't updated it for a little while. It's This is not automated. Every single notation you see on every one of my thousands of charts I've done by hand. It's not, a, it's not a great way to do it, but it's the best way that I can do. And it gives you a real feel. It's like... Uh, you, uh, it's like hands-on. It really, instead of automated and just taking it blindly, you're really doing the homework. That's what I like about this. So here's your trough A. Remember on the way down, troughs, trough B, trough C. Oh, I'm not sure which round number you're talking about. Let me just check the one that was on August the 5th. That was 69.72, and the one on Friday was round number low. Ugh, I don't see that. AEM. Um, yeah, I might, I must have missed it, but it doesn't matter because whatever it is, this is at a peak D. It's in a sell signal right now. The nine period moving average went negative. Now, this is the big thing. I'm going to take just a moment to talk about this. You see this peak C? We had it in uh, another one of the um, gold stocks. And I said, every was it a gold stock? Was it a. Well, whatever it was, there was exactly the same chart. And I said, you know, everything about this C looks like it's a D. I'm going to watch it closely. But so far, it's holding well. The 9 is way over the 14. This, the MACD is still good. It's just about across negative in the weekly. The stochastic is great at 85%. So that I'm calling a peak C, and it's sitting there. It's in a buy mode. So I'm just going to say in the next, well, I'm going to give it the whole week. I don't want to see this close under... 75.75. A close below 75.75 and it's a 77.36. says, uh-oh, gold, especially a leader like Agnica Mines, Eagle Mines, and I've got this on a monthly chart with a beautiful cup formation. Number of bars on the left from 89.23 
the week, oh, September 2020, that's four years ago, down to the law that was made in uh, August, uh, J uh, September of 2022, should equal the number of bars to the right side, but it isn't, it's, it's stalling at the uh, Chapman Wave inside wedge target resistance line. So I'm going to say I might have to move the plumb line from that midpoint there. Oh, I have, I have already. I've moved it to the right to this doji candle. And that just says by 2025, the first part of 2025, we should be getting to 89.23. But in the meantime, uh, you've got to be careful because on a, on a, on a monthly basis, a close below or any week that closes under 74 says, oops, you're going to be taking a lot more time. But so far, it's held well to this point in the weekly chart, and that's the most important thing. So what do I need to see if I want this to go to retest the highs? You want to see by Thursday to Monday of the following week. So this coming Thursday to a week from today, at least one attempt to get to 79.50 um, and hopefully hold above that. That's what I'm looking at here. I don't want to see the, the downside. So, okay, next question came in was, um, yeah, I didn't do Bitcoin. Remember, I've been negative Bitcoin for months. Still am uh, saying it's not a serious thing. It's just lower lows and lower highs after a spectacular move to the upside. How it handles uh, 50,000 is going to be really important. It's, it's 55,120 right now, up 1,420. Uh, it's, it's just not a great looking chart. And there was something I wanted to do. Oh, PLTR. Palantir got added to the S&P. So it's up beautifully. It's making that leg D. I drew this in last week, the cup formation. And that's an island reversal from 2123 to 3375. That's a 30% gain. Wow, leg E in the, in the weekly chart. And the leg E continues in the monthly chart. Palantir Technologies, PLTR up 3.43 at 3375. A lot of threes, huh? Up 11.18%. Very nice action. Uh, this is the one that I kept saying <laughs> for subscribers. I wanted to add it to the list. We have it written down as, as uh, a stock to follow, but we never did anything. I never did anything. And uh, that's a great move. So this is in play and it's been in play for a little while. Um, okay, next question I had was uh, where did, oh, PFE. PFE is in the uh, pharmaceutical since it's Pfizer. Take, uh, Pfizer. Oops, what happened there? Pfizer, I'm hearing funny noises on the, on the internet uh, connection. PFE, hopefully we're still working. Yep, I can see it's working. Oh, Pfizer had a really good move today. So it made a peak C in the uh, weekly chart with that left side, right side price time match. Monthly chart, as I said, looks horrible. So the question came in a while back. And I, about Pfizer, and I said, if you are looking at it in, with a, say maybe a fundamental look or looking at it long term, saying this is one of the great pharmaceutical companies, I like it, it's a laggard. Maybe a Lilly has already done its job and it's a still lead, but Pfizer could have a really good percentage gain from a much lower level at 29, uh, 20, it was in the 28th. Now it's having a really good session today. I love this restart pattern. But you've got to get follow through. And what it says, the low that was made, uh, let me just do this quickly before we go to the break. The low that was made uh, in August, that was on the 16th at 27.85. As long as that holds, you could get a Chapman wave. This is a technique that I developed way back in my CD, introducing the Chapman wave methodology I talk about a lot. This is where it starts... And it keeps fading. It keeps going to like an A and then it fails. Then it goes to an A and there may be a B and then it fails. So now it's gone from an A, a few A's, and now it's gone to a real B. So that says this has got the characteristic of a restart. Now what happens is it's very often in a kind of a, a rectangle formation that is slowly, very slowly building a bowl or a cup formation. And the moment it breaks out, it says goodbye to the whole, in this case, 28, 29 area, because it wants to visit the 30s and move higher. So that's, I'm looking at it, I'm saying, uh, Fletch, I like this very much in terms of the way you look at things. You have patience to look at it. It's building support because that nine period moving average in the weekly. But I have to tell you that if it closes in the 27s at any point, 
especially under 27, say 2730, that's a problem. But right now it's building a very nice base. So I hope that helps you. Yes. I'll be back. Dowser 401 is a good day. Dowser Chapman Tiger Dictations Hour. The consistency you're looking for is closer than you think. One or two adjustments are usually all you need to change your equity curve from red to green and keep it there. Come join Larry Pesavento Live to learn what separates the winners from the losers. Join Larry Pesavento on the second and fourth Friday of every month for three hours of live trading from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Time, where Larry will show you the market setting up and most important of all, the state of mind of a winning trader. By watching Larry trade, you'll learn the Fibonacci levels. You'll learn how to apply A to B to C to D trading patterns. You'll learn trade management, pattern recognition, and much more. Join Larry August 9th and 23rd for more live trading action. For this month only, use code LARRYOG24 at checkout to save $50 off your first month as a subscriber to Live Trading Fridays for his live trading sessions, where you'll sit right beside him as he trades the market live. For this month only, enter code LARRYOG24 and save $50 off your first month. For all the information and to reserve your spot today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento. A pro's pro with over 50 years of experience, Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Right, so let me just go through this because I did it live and I, I, I explained exactly what I was looking at. Would I know that I call this phantom peak right here because you couldn't get F to G and an H is never an H in the Chapman methodology in the 10 minute chart. So I made this a phantom peak and I explained that right here in this leg D, especially with an E in the five minute chart and a G in the one minute chart, that there was a really good chance that this could be a D. And look what happened. It was a D. Look at that. Now it's the same as the Dow. Would I have known that the steepness of this D was going to be quite that, going from 54.80 to 54.53, whatever it is. That's a huge move. It's as big as the move on the way up, almost an Eiffel Tower, straight up, straight down. So that's, look at this chart on the right. Now have a look at this chart on the left, uh, right here. Look at this. So you can see that this it's the concept of the technique that you have to use and that you don't know how steep it's going to. I use that phantom peak. This could still be a C. That other one could still be a C and you could still rally to a D. But this is a way of being prepared. And in a sense, we were prepared because we have been taking little bits off all the time, but not for the steepness of the pullback. 
And that's that that's this just explained it perfectly, visually, live, everything about it. And now what we're looking at is the 200 period moving average. Does that become a base? And does it now start to move? Are we done with that pullback? And are we going to go back to the top to actually make a proper D? We don't know. But look at that. Uh, and look at this. Look at the 200 period moving average in the one minute chart. Look how it's been resistance for so long, for 30, almost 30 minutes. Isn't that? So those are the techniques I like to use. You can check them out by becoming a subscriber to my opening call. You get umpteen videos on all these different techniques. Well, I'm going to hand you over to Steve Rhodes. Have a wonderful rest of the day. I will see you tomorrow. Check out my opening call, daily newsletter, and um, good trading. It's going to happen. That was a 411.